all right so myself lovelish sharma uh, basically and uh, this webinar is focused on how to prepare for uh, uh, level 1 cmt level 1 right and uh, i think uh, uh, from third we will be having uh, exams right so uh, the basic idea was uh, behind this webinar was uh, just to uh, you know clear some doubts basically of students i've been doing a lot of consulting on uh, telephonic consulting and through linkedin of uh, what to expect and what not and there were certain uh, doubts as well that uh, we have studied uh, the book or uh, yes i'll share the recording uh, um of this uh, we have uh, you know read the book and uh, some of you might have just gone through the test bank uh, because that's what you know uh, desperate measures are when the exam date is near so i'll just take you through um, this slide i hope it help and yes you can let your questions uh, keep you can post them on the chat okay so this is about us and this is about myself uh, i've been i'm a cmt and a cft as well uh, so let's cut to the chase and uh, yes this is about uh, broadly this is about uh, the cmt program and uh, what not about level 1 level 2 so this is about level 1 so let's get uh, to the point that uh, this is a two hour exam uh, which will be focused on uh, various area various subjects which is related to technical analysis it's a two hour exam 132 queries will be there a lot of questions uh, are going to be there so um, i believe briefly you have uh, just a tad below 1 minute uh, 20 seconds 1 minute uh, 15 seconds around that for each question with that you would also want to see that there are uh, 12 extra questions uh, which uh, the association uh, puts into the exam and it will be um, unscored so what uh, it is done is basically they are going to test they will be unscored but they are going to be tested these questions are going to come and uh, probably uh, from a view point that they might be included in uh, next examination which will be held in june 2022 uh, so this is broadly about the exam there is no negative market that is one aspect which is uh, um critical i would say because as it might be uh, you know um easy that uh, there is no uh, negative marking but at the same time it is very critical because uh, students do get carried away uh, they do get carried away to the fact that there is no negative marking so psychologically this uh, no negative uh, marking is something which can work as a benefit but at times it can also uh, get you in a complacent position so you really uh, passing a score is undisclosed uh, but uh, usually what we suggest is uh, people and candidates students they should focus at around 75% i myself when i gave back in 2017 and i guess 18 starting what i focused was on around uh, 85 to 90 percent, and to be very honest, I got around like somewhat 100 percent in uh, seven or eight out of them. So that was my idea because level one is uh, uh, now gaining traction. We are seeing uh, a lot of students coming in and uh, looking to for the charter because this one course is something which is going to change your entire perspective about technical analysis. So this uh, passing score is something very competitive in level one. because there are a lot of candidates who are already experienced about technical analysis they have been uh, uh, practicing this tool for like say for few years now but then there are candidates who are like uh, uh, um, let me add uh, participants in the waiting room all right 
so uh, there are candidates who are uh, fresher they are just out of the college and they are now practicing technical analysis they are uh, actively trading as well so they want to take up this uh, course uh, this uh, path and uh, develop those kind of skills that is also very good uh, considering the fact that they have taken this decision at a very young age let's get to the point uh, uh, so this was about briefly about the exam uh, the textbook is 630 pages it keeps on changing i believe there are a lot of chapters that are added uh, in 2021 curriculum uh, we have seen a lot of chapters added uh, in every section so now um, there is a uh, in, uh, you know single chapter on which is based on indexes which is based on futures which is based on currency market uh so that students gain traction and uh, get exposure to uh, those markets which are actively traded so um i guess there are 41 42 chapters now and uh, this is section wise waiting now i've just taken this and i guess this is updated for 2021 and uh, uh, what i want everyone is to focus on uh right um this particular area a lot of students a lot of uh, participants you know uh, when the exam date is near what i have generally seen is uh, they come for something which is uh, we talk in market about holy grail you know uh, anything that can make uh, uh quick money something like that and uh, uh, same way uh, people who are or candidates who are like busy with their schedule and everything in the end they do feel this particular vacuum this particular pressure that uh, uh, would it be just fine if they go through the test bank uh, or would it be just fine if they go through the major uh, chapters which have uh, you know higher uh, weightage so usually uh, some people some candidate do fall in this trap and they focus on uh, uh, chapters which are uh, you know heavily weighted so which is completely wrong which is completely wrong because uh, in the end uh, the exam is not uh, easy it is uh, a tough exam if provided you have uh, uh, given that uh, study hour which is recommended by the cmt association and not just that candidates who have gone through the book so uh, if you have done so i believe you have a lot to uh, uh, let me mute the participants right uh, so uh, this is uh, one of the trap which is there you cannot just escape or hope to clear the exam just because uh, you have uh, uh, gone through a few chapters who, which are you know heavily weighted or you have certain test banks you have certain uh, ppts or such the idea is if you have gone through the book and uh, so there is a lot of unlearning and relearning which is done in level 1 so probably if you are something who is practicing a uh, technical analysis for a good amount of time and you have chosen that you should be pursuing the charter uh this particular course the uh the big difference is that you'll have to unlearn a lot of things which you might have uh, thought about uh, ta and then you'll have to relearn the candidates who are fresh uh, who have just started practicing ta i believe for them uh, it is uh, all about learning so uh, there are two aspects for uh, different uh, background of the candidates so um some of you might be um, in a job some of you might be in certain uh, professional careers you might not be getting time so this is a, a one of the traps which i believe uh, candidates fall into and they they come usually and the uh, velocity or the number of people uh, coming after november 15th november 17th it's been 3 years now i've seen this and uh, usually then Uh, when they are short on time and uh, probably there are 15 20 days left they come and they ask all types of questions that uh, whether they should just uh, clear this chapter or any particular important uh, fact of the matter is there is nothing which is called as important chapters 
this particular course, this particular um, curriculum is very exhaustive. It gives you exposure to those books which are generally recommended to, to any analyst or any trader, uh, you know, um, books from uh, personalities like Perry Kaufman or David Aronson or Charles Kirkpatrick or uh, um, Michael Kahn. Uh, they have contributed to this uh, curriculum. So the uh, curriculum is quite exhaustive. It gives you exposure to certain aspects of technical analysis as a tools to these chapter which you have to study. So probably if you haven't gone through book once, um, that might be a problem. But anyhow, uh, we'll take this uh, discussion forward and see. So this is the uh, sector wise baiting. And yes, uh, sec uh, it is heavily weighted toward uh, uh, chart and pattern analysis, trend analysis, and then selection and decision making. So um, five or six key areas of TA tools are heavily weighted and they cover a lot of uh, major portion. So yes, this is something which one should focus on. But then the ultimate goal of uh, pursuing this is uh, for me, it has been going from uh, discretionary to non-discretionary and totally on an automation mode. So uh, that is the journey which I have pursued. And I believe that is uh, the focus of uh, pursuing this course as well, where you can inculcate those skills. Uh, you might be an analyst uh, behind a desk looking at uh, various markets, or you might be a trader uh, struggling to make uh, or applying the tools, maybe in a creative way. So uh, uh, all the chapters are very important. Uh, be it uh, theory or be it uh, statistical analysis or system testing, which is just 5%. But you are going to be judged for that 5%. So you might be uh, willing to uh, not just focus on these chapters, but entire curriculum. Let's move forward. So this is the breakup. I believe you already know now. Now this is the subdomain. I'll be discussing a lot about this and then move forward to specific things which I want to share. So chart and pattern analysis 23%. It is something heavily weighted and very important when I'm talking about charts. So there are different variations of charts. You know? When I'm talking about patterns there are variation of pattern it might be like candlesticks it might be pndf it might be noiseless charts it can also be line or candlestick chart so the uh, curriculum is wide when it comes to chart and pattern analysis then you've got to look at elliott wave fibonacci and support and resistances moving average convergence divergence bollinger band stochastic <coughs> You don't have to, uh, one important point here is you might be practicing TA for a, a good amount of time. You might know what uh, what is uh, uh, the difference between momentum indicators and trend indicators and uh, oscillators, bounded, unbounded indicators. Uh, what I would suggest is don't uh, try to put your experience or your knowledge, whatever you have practiced when you are answering the questions. Be very, very basic. If you already practice, uh, if you're already practicing TA, that is well and good. That is good because you might be feeling it's easy. But then as well, uh, there is a psychological play here. Uh, so even I, when I was uh, looking at MSED and or uh, studying about RSI and whatnot, so what I was uh, uh, making a mistake is I was trying to put my experience of uh, you know using the MSED while answering the questions. So that is one flaw. That is one uh, you know um, uh, gray area which you might want not to uh, you know. And you want to avoid that because uh, when you are talked about uh, uh, MACD, you might be uh, given a chart and you might be a, as a trader, contrary trader. But uh, since this is uh, all about uh, basic terminologies, 
and idea of technical analysis as tools so this is something uh, which a lot of people fall into uh, that they think something they already have a pre assumption they already have a, a notion about uh, say rsi msd but uh, while answering they try to put their experience uh, while answering and which may be uh, uh, working as a disadvantage so that is one thing markets uh, knowledge about markets is all about basic knowledge so this is something uh, if you have experience that is well and good you already know about the markets if you are a fresher that is also uh, good because now you are exposed to different markets how do they work uh, what is the basic uh, function behind those market what is the size of those markets trend analysis is something very important when i'm talking about trend analysis um, there are so these are the brief rules only uh, trend can be analyzed based on moving averages regression and trend lines uh, you might see uh, it's it all being changed in l2 when we are talking about trend lines but yes here trend lines are given a lot of importance and that's what we practice as maybe uh, a trader even if you're a um, say con trader or if you're a uh, non discretionary trader you might want to play with the trend lines so trend lines are very important as an aspect so you might be uh, looking at a lot of charts where trend line is there and you might want to ask uh, certain questions to yourself whether this trend line is acting as a support and whether this this should be an opportunity or this should be a resistance or even how to draw trend line so that might be one aspect regression is something which is uh, uh, mathematical in nature when we are talking about trend and same with moving averages so when i'm talking about moving averages uh, there are different moving averages there are variation it, it is sma it is then there is ema wma and then there is uh, uh, yeah, wells wilder based uh, moving average uh, where we are taking wilder's uh, formula and uh, uh, creating an ma so um, do not be under impression that uh, even i was uh, uh, under this uh, um, dilemma whether the kush, uh, whether the there will be um, formulas now that's a fair amount of uh, that's a fair question from students whether there will be formulas so when i was studying uh, i uh, particularly uh, thought that uh, it is I've, I've, i've had a feedback from people that uh, you don't need to look at formulas then certain people said that you might need, uh, need to learn formulas but i'll be very uh, open and honest that uh, it is all about judging your uh, uh, knowledge of you know body of knowledge so as a uh, uh, a trader analyst or person who is pursuing cmt i believe you should know the formula the logic behind the formula so i know the logic behind rsi that it is uh, uh, say based on uh, um, it is say based on uh, um, rs you know average up days average down days or uh, um, there is a key difference between like formula so if you have studied that well so there is a key difference between stochastic and williams r which is uh, uh, you know stochastic is say based on uh, your uh, position of close relative to lowest low uh, while uh, williams r is uh, focused on uh, i believe uh, your close relative to highest high so this is the key difference between those formulas and the formula is quite simple uh, they have the same denominator i guess and then uh, Uh, what uh, uh, changes is that there is a highest high in williams r and in case of stochastic there is a, a lowest low obviously because it is trying to identify close in range basis while williams r is are trying to identify close uh, in relation to the highest high it has been so that is the key difference between those formulas so i don't expect you to learn uh, them by heart there is uh, uh, no advantage is uh, no advantage in just uh, learning the formula Uh, for the sake of examination if you know the key difference like i've just explained between stochastic and williams r then it makes sense you know so uh, do expect that yes you might want to learn about formula if not then then at least you should be able uh, to understand the concept behind the formula right because then 
you are actually halfway through if you know the concept so probably if you are given say multiple uh, options uh, behind under a formula that uh, what is uh, say stochastic or what is williams r you should be able to identify this yes uh, this particular formula has uh, uh, three components that there is a highest high there is a, a lowest low and then there is a close so there are three components which you needed so when you put it in an equation there are four components so that is the idea uh, behind uh, learning the formula so that at least when you see certain questions which is related to formula you are halfway through so you can at least uh, be um, confident enough to answer them so moving averages same way uh, learning the difference between them is important how uh, EMA is exponentially weighted while SMA is uh, linearly weighted, you know, uh, equally weighted. So uh, you might perform calculation for an SMA simply, but uh, you might want to just take a pen, take some 10 or 20 numbers. It is easy. It is available anywhere, say uh, Yahoo, EOD, Finance or Trading you gives that. So just note them down do it on the paper try to calculate uh, different ma's say it's an sma it's an ema uh, it's a wma it's a lma and it's a, a, a based on uh, wellness wilder's uh, factor things like that once you calculate yourself on a paper or uh, uh, by your uh, your hand you will be able to remember it so yes uh, learn the formula understand the concept behind it and then uh, it is easy uh, when you're facing the question because it's it, it shouldn't take more than say 20 or 30 seconds given the fact that you already have calculator to calculate any moving averages and you don't expect that there might be 50 uh, time series of say 50 uh, uh, different uh, uh, closing prices or so you might be you might uh, want to just calculate 10 or 15 and then calculate different moving averages that's way uh, you are at least sure that anything which is related to moving averages which is a major part of uh, say 16 percent so which is a major part so that will help you to cover that uh, entire section then market indicators uh, let me take you through uh, the uh, los itself as well so that uh, i can uh, be more specific so this was uh, this is uh, about uh, section one let's uh, do that first so uh, basic principle of ta you might want to learn what is primary what is secondary trend what is uh, short term what is intraday charts you want to uh, learn about uh, why determining the trend is important. Then there is a Dow theory. So what are the three basic types? What are the three basic types uh, of Dow theory? And uh, uh, as defined by time, what is primary, secondary, minor? And when you're talking about, uh, there is some noise. So please uh, mute yourself. Otherwise, I'll have to. You know, mute. Um, Sorry for that. All right. So, yes. Um, yes, I've done that. I'm beyond all, the all. If you want to put uh, questions, uh, you can put it in the chat. So, um, you might want to look at what are the three basic, you know, uh, uh, tenets which is given by the uh, trends given by the Dow theory. That is the basis of all. Even at in present time, it might be very basic, uh, but that is the idea behind TA. That is the idea behind TA. And then you've got the uh, trend patterns of all when you're talking about upward, what is upward? How do you see higher high, higher low? And when you're talking about downward, so you might want to uh, look at those examples which is given in the book. Uh, then yes, confirmation, history and construction of charts. So there are various charts. You as a TA practitioner, you might have gone through all the charts, but then it is always good to learn. It is always good to visit the basics. Uh, so it has helped me a lot. It also might help you. So it is always good to uh, look at the basics. Uh, what is the key difference between arithmetic and log chart? You know, uh, there is a huge difference when you're looking at uh, arithmetic and when you're looking at log chart. So the, uh, the entire picture changes, the entire image changes. What are the data points? Uh, so, 
say I'm looking at bar chart, I'm looking at four data points, I'm looking at uh, candlestick chart, I'm looking at four data points, I'm looking at line chart, I'm looking at one data point. Uh, so this is this key difference. How many data points do make uh, a chart, a construction of a chart? That is also uh, you know important. Then the trend, as I've said about uh, you, this is purely theoretical. You've got to look at uptrend, downtrend, and uh, whatnot, like, you know, um, uh, reversal point, uh, points, how uh, reversal points are identified, general rule for trend lines. So as I said in the starting, you want to look at what are the rules for a trend line? How do you make a trend line? Uh, what are the key points? Where do you connect the one and the second line you already have then automatically the third point. So how do you create that? How trend line can act as a warning signal? So there is always a trend line which is in play. Uh, it can be a simple trend line. I don't think we are looking at parabolic trend line, which is covered here, but yes, it can be a simple trend line. How, how uh, it acts as a warning signal. So that is one general rule, which is uh, there. And it is actually good to study that. Uh, you might have drawn a thousands of trend line over a period of time, but then what are the basics to draw? Uh, and following that basics, can that uh, change your trading style? Breakouts, stops and retracement. What is a breakout? When I'm talking about a breakout, uh, uh, how do you identify the breakout? Uh, confirming and filtering. So there are certain methods which are given. So how do you filter a breakout? Can, um, is it a trend breakout? Is it a low volatility breakout is it a high volatility breakout methods for setting entry and exit uh, what is the purpose of entry and exits uh, define retracement pullback throwback uh, and uh, then uh, when i'm talking about retracement uh, pullback and throwback can you identify that on a chart if a chart is uh, uh, shown uh, in front of you. And uh, I can identify retracement, pullback, and throwback. So you might want to look at charts which are given in the book and, uh, uh, you know, put circle that this is particular chart uh, teaches you about uh, breakout. So that is one uh, key aspect. Moving averages, as I said, what is the basic principle behind it? This is something which is going to be there uh, till level three, you know, not just the basics. How do you inculcate moving averages when you are actually putting a system in place and why it's a key component. So learning from here itself is something uh, which can take you, uh, you know, a few steps ahead of your time. So what is the basic principle of moving averages? How uh, the basic difference between moving averages, say it is a simple moving averages, which is equally weighted, then you want to consider uh, where your data can be exponentially weighted uh, in a trend. So it can be really uh, close to a price. So that is one uh, key difference. So it is something very important. Do not uh, skip this. How do you calculate? Now there is an, uh, it is said how, explain how to calculate. So a lot of people uh, might be under impression they are using moving averages and they know how to calculate. That is well and good. But as I said, uh, it, it just need 10 closing prices for you to put on a paper and calculate those moving averages. So I gave this or uh, share this based on experience that yes, this is something you should know, especially the formula behind. Identify trends and signals with moving averages when there is a crossover. So um, basically, if uh, uh, there is a change in the trend of moving averages, so that itself is a signal, or uh, closing prices above the moving averages, that is another way to read a moving average signal. So there is a difference between that as well. Directional movement indicators, how, how much important ADX is uh, as a directional indicator. And uh, what is the, uh, you know, components of ADX? So it's a DMI, there is a positive DMI, there is a negative uh, uh, MI, uh, there's a positive MI. So these two are important. Then there are variations which can be used from moving averages. So 
uh, certain moving average is taken you can create envelope out of it you can create a band around it then you can use various bands it can be a uh, linear regression uh, moving average, linear lr based uh, moving average and then uh, lr based bands you can put around it so yes their characteristic which is very important idea here is even if you have not gone through the book uh, which you should have by now uh, might be due to time constraint, might be due to some commitment, that is perfectly fine. So at least you should go through the LOS. At least you should go through the LOS, even, even uh, if it is just two days left. So today is 30th, we've got first, we've got second. So I covered my course uh, uh, well ahead of time, but then I gave myself uh, I cannot cover uh, read the entire book in last two days. At least go through the LOS. If you have made some notes, if you have gone through, that is well and good. But at least go through the LOS. That act as a um, guiding light for the entire um, chapter, uh, learning objective statements, LOS. And uh, uh, LOS is learning objective statements, yes. So, um, that act as a guiding light because uh, when I'm creating a body of knowledge for say uh, uh, disciplines such as uh, uh, technical analysis as a tool, I at least expect this much out of candidate, right? That this should be the basic, then there, may, there might be different examples, there might be different studies which you will see, there might be different uh, systems which might be given in the book or there might be different application, how uh, uh, different traders how uh, different uh, uh, personality have uh, uh, used those indicators. So bar chart patterns is something uh, like there is a key difference uh, between a flag, uh, there's a key difference between flag and there's a key difference between how do you look at flag and then pennant. Uh, do you know that difference? how in a flag lines are slanted, how in uh, it is a bit against the trend. So uh, I might draw it and uh, you. Know. So this, this is, these is like, uh, if you have gone through the, so this can be your flag, which is uh, a bit slanted and this can be coded as well, a bit slanted against the trend. Um, away from the trend, that's a flag. But when you look at uh, pennant, uh, it's the same formation, but it is something which is seeing convergence of two lines, all right? And, uh, and there are people coming in all the uh, waiting room, right? So there are, um, there is a key difference. Now, if you have gone through the uh, book, if you have gone through those patterns, if you have gone through uh, the content, you might have noticed this, that this is the key difference. Now, I might, I explained this, but this is something which you should know as a person who is practicing TA, that if I'm looking at the chart, I should be able to identify that th this is a flag and this is a pennant. So uh, my lines are converging in pennant and uh, uh, in a flag, uh, the lines do not converge. They go together and they don't converge. So how do you measure this flag? I might, uh, you know, uh, want to look at a chart and do this practically that uh, there is a formation or even if not practically, you might create with an arbitrary numbers and try to measure the distance and then take out the target. So this is a very good practice which you can do. So this is something which is, uh, because these are like very short term continuation patterns. Identify classic chart patterns, triangle, double and triple tops. You are not expected uh, to um, know everything. But at least when I'm talking about triangle, you want to look at what is cradle, what is apex, what is the calculation? Is it a continuation or is it a descending or is it an ascending? Uh, how many data points are needed to create triangle? When I'm creating a triangle, how many data points are needed? for uh, the trend lines to touch and form a, a you know, triangle. So that is a kind of very key information. This is something which is 
uh, if you have read, it is reading between the lines. Uh, uh, and this is the way even I do uh, uh, teach the students. Uh, influence of computer technology and common characteristic of patterns and all those things, then yes, uh, this is theoretical, but then bar chart patterns is something which is uh, we do as a trader look at every single day. And uh, so these are the basics and uh, that is what you are being going to be tested upon. Then there are short term patterns. Uh, one key point here is and uh, locate reversals. The first, uh, this first one, and long term trends using short term price patterns. I remember this because when I was studying, I was looking at that. How do you locate, uh, you know, long term reversals using very short term patterns? And they do happen. They do happen. There are patterns. So this is something which I went through again and again how it is explained in the book. Because this is something very uh, big opportunity that is being thrown at you that you can locate long-term reversals using short-term patterns. So this is something you might want to also uh, uh, study with interest, but then again, there is a time constraint. So this is in the LOS. So something very important, there are various caps. You look at a chart and you identify gaps. Now, is that gap a breakaway gap? breakout or breakaway gap uh, or is it common gap or those are measured gaps which is forming in between a trend so key difference is there you know so you want to look at gaps in a bigger perspective that if i'm given a chart i am looking at uh, a certain pattern which is needed to be identified which needs to be identified uh, am I able to say that this is a breakaway gap, this is a measured gap, and this is something very common gap, uh, which you might see in uh, uh, various um, lower uh, uh, scripts. What is wide range and narrow range? Uh, which one? So like, for example, I've just said wide range and narrow range. So you want to understand what I, when I say wide range, it is volatility expansion. When I'm talking about uh, narrow range, it is volatility compression. So uh, uh, this is something same, I believe. All right, so this is uh, same, pretty much same concept, uh, done a bit differently. So um, this is nothing, this is uh, the same study, which I believe, yes, is applied. It's a uh, compression and expansion. So you, uh, might want to look at uh, the idea behind that. We all know what is out, uh, outside range. We all know what is narrow range, that there is a candle uh, inside a previous candle and uh, bearish engulfing is uh, an outside bar. And what is the important of say outside bar? Is it, does it signify uh, some trend pause or does it signify volatility expansion? So how do you frame your learning as well is important. Can you please clear the drawing of flag and pin it? Ah, yes, I would, thank you. Right, so uh, uh, implications for volatility. So as I said, you want to look at pattern and then what is the kind of volatility is expressing in its terms. So again, very basic, but then uh, uh, basics are very trivial. Uh, simplicity is very hard to understand. Confirmations, how do you confirm? So there are a lot of uh, methods which are given based on divergence swings. We all know that there is a higher high on the price uh, and a lower high on the indicator, how the divergence is there or uh, what is overbought, oversold. There are unbounded bounded indicators. So RSI might be a bounded indicator, but uh, um, uh, I'll come on to that. And then there is uh, uh, unbounded indicator, so CCI. So can that be, or say MACD, it is unbounded. And the reading can go over. You might want to look at 2020 readings of MACD. So that was one outlier. So uh, how do you um, look at these indicators? Are you able to differentiate between these indicators? What is the idea behind them? All there is 
basic you don't might want to uh, use your own uh, idea about the indicator and try to find that in answer okay that is uh, uh, one uh, very very uh, big uh, uh, area where a uh, trap where students fall so you are uh, using that indicator you know rsi goes above 70 it's a breakout that is one uh, idea of trading uh, which we have seen momentum traders use rsi going above 70 is a breakout that can be uh, done but then uh, this is about basics of technical analysis so for here 70 is an overbought area 30 is an oversold area and you want to stick to that you don't want to apply your uh, trading knowledge or your trading idea or your system idea here that no 70 is where the breakout happens and it's a buy zone so it's not overbought it's a buy that is a key trick you know that uh, uh, trick which is uh, we were saying that it's a trick so that is the idea the trick there is no there are no tricky questions to be very honest idea is what is the interpretation of that indicator or chart you are doing so you that's what i said you might have your own experience about uh, uh, indicator how you are using that in a system how you are making money with that or how you are giving it to your clients uh, but here it's all about basics so you might want to stick to that so read any question any question you go through read it twice or thrice but there is enough time if you have uh, read so i completed it in like uh, one hour 10 minutes one hour 15 minutes right so i had a spare time so yes i did uh, recalculate and re uh, went through again and all those things but you might want not to do that if you are uh, someone who has at least not studied the book or gone through the curriculum or the los itself so uh, read the question twice or thrice study it again and again go to the back of your mind if you have uh, stored the information uh, uh, in a well placed manner in your mind you might be will be easily taking out the answer so do not uh, just read it once and look at the options available okay read the question i personally don't want to look at options until unless i have understood the question okay so that is one very very key difference um, um study material to learn ethics ethics uh, i'll take this question because it, this is something very common in all the levels be it level one be it level two be it level three the fallacy here is that people don't usually study this and they take it in the end well i believe when certain uh, uh, area which is there in all the three levels you might want to study it because it's it, it will become your scoring area okay it is something which is very uh, easy to understand once you have gone through the concept so there is a pdf which is uh, i'm going to share on the chat it is something uh, shared by the CFS Society and uh, the CMT Association follows that in its ethics. And uh, it is 250 pages. It is 250 pages, but then there is a three pager as well, uh, which gives you a brief idea about ethics. And then, yes, there are uh, mock questions which you can easily find on CFS Society's uh, page. They do uh, provide this book as well. Point and figure charting, uh, it's a different way to look at charts, right? So uh, you might want to know about what is the idea behind uh, point and figure chart charting? What are those 12, 15 rules uh, which works as a basis of uh, point and figure charting? How do you construct? What is the box size? What is the reversal? then there might be some key information which can be placed that uh, P and F uh, um, can be created based on say uh, ATR and such. But then uh, this is basically an exposure to P and F. 
and at least when you are exposing yourself to a different uh, way of charting you are given an opportunity to basically learn how you can identify say various common patterns which are there how do you calculate uh, you know the targets the vertical counts and what not and uh, how do you see uh, so idea here is if you want to keep it simple if you want to learn the concept what you can do is what i would suggest is you should at least uh, take a pen and a paper take a price series take a box size and try to create a pnf chart once you do it by hand it shouldn't take if you know the concept it shouldn't take more than uh, 15 minutes or so uh, constructing a pnf chart of say even 20 data points basic signals so these are actually given with examples in the book in the curriculum so you might want to look at uh, those examples because once you go through it uh, uh, in a way where you are uh, looking at on the chart uh, in that way uh, uh, you would be able to remember it so yes the time is uh, very uh, you know uh, short given the fact that you have exams up ahead but this is something which is going to take 15 minutes so then there are uh, other sections so there is uh, eliot wave and uh, the anatomy of eliot wave trading so uh, i myself personally didn't practice ew uh, before the exam but then after i've done it i have applied these concepts while i was trading uh, uh, crude oil futures in comex market and they worked fantastically so uh, here you would be learning and when you are learning you will be given different uh, uh, examples in the book itself so uh, the rules behind the ew you might want to look at uh, the recording will be shared for sure uh, the rules behind the ew uh, the one and the two the third has to be uh, the biggest and fourth and fifth and the corrective waves and then there are flats and regulars and uh, so all these things uh, need to be uh, visually understood okay the point here is uh, visually understood because uh, you will be given certain rules that this particular rule uh, should make uh, an ew count but then at the same time if you are able to identify that visually this should uh, uh, serve value not just to clear the exam but uh, at least when you're looking uh, uh, down the uh, various charts uh, be as an analyst or a trader measuring the market strength foundation of cycle theory basics of cycle analysis um market strength market breadth is something which is still very you know a uh, key area which is i believe unexplored for me personally this was a very revealing chapter okay so the idea here is you just don't uh, read this to pass but then if you are able to understand various measures or various indicators that can be created to look at uh, the strength when i talk about market internals the number of participants which are uh, say above a uh, certain moving averages below certain moving averages how you can use uh, or look at volume so when i'm talking about volume uh, there was a key line which i still remember which people uh, or trader or an analyst should remember that when you are looking at volume analysis you should be looking at the same volume in same time frame related to previous few days you know this is a very key concept now if you have read the book if you have read between the lines so i'm looking at say certain volume say if i'm looking at market i'm looking at volume between like say 915 to uh, 935 or 930 or 945 i want to look at volume in the same time period on the previous day it's a very key difference you know so we might use volume in a way that we are looking at volume is increasing volume is down but then this is one line which changes your whole perspective about volume and how it can be included 
right so uh, what is uh, the use of volume in measuring the market uh, strength stock market number of stocks above or below moving averages we uh, i mean looking at indian markets i have a very small universe of say 1500 and i filter it down to say uh, 500 and then obviously when you're trading you're creating a universe but when you're using uh, when you're looking at us market which is having more than 10000 stocks you apply the same filter uh, you might look at still uh, say 4000 stocks coming into that filter so this uh, this breadth measures you know they are used widely especially in developed markets like us you know which has participants as good as say 10000 so how do you uh, get down to few selected counters and try to analyze the overall breadth of the market so this is something very important not just in learning but in practice as well uh, cycle you want to look at uh, what are the various left to right transition low to low and uh, the amplitude all those key terms which are used in cycle analysis and then there are uh, basics so there are methods to detrain the data what are those methods you might want to look at that it's, it's not just going to help you in the analysis or passing the exam but at least um, um, the uh, uh, practical application maybe when you are moving to say system uh, trading or such things markets and volatility so this is something uh, five tradable instruments that the technician is likely to have this is something which is uh, based on knowledge so you gain a lot of knowledge when you're talking uh, when you're looking at uh, different market different asset classes uh, which asset class is uh, trending in nature uh, which asset class may perform well for trend following systems so that is something which you learn from this uh, uh, chapter equities um, we all know indexes fixed income so this is uh, all about knowledge of uh, various markets so i'm not going to spend time here futures etps etns and currencies options ivs and the vix index uh, there is uh, despite this being level 1 what I have learned and what I also believe is happening is that volatility as an instrument, as an asset class, is gaining traction. And that's what you learn in L3 as well. And that's what you might have noticed uh, being into the market or being uh, as a trader in the last few time, uh, years or months. So uh, this is a very important chapter. And uh, what I believe is uh, you might employ uh, say your greeks when you're trading options or you're managing option book uh, but this is something which you gives exposure to this market uh, there is also one key line uh, about uh, the role of ta as a tool and options markets you know so you might want to read between the lines in this chapter the basic greeks there are five or six greeks uh, three gigs which uh, are very important and then Obviously, there are other Greeks as well. Uh, understanding the IV, the concept of put call parity, uh, what is the difference between historical volatility and forward looking or implied volatility? And then there is realized volatility. So, all these things, you know, you might want to understand uh, that this is a very important uh, subject. Volatility as an asset class is gaining traction so you this is something which is uh, there in level one itself so it is going to go with you in level two and level three how volatility may be used to estimate price movement the first thing i did as a, a, a candidate back in 2018 uh, is i coded them i coded them so that i can use them and yes i've used them now uh, for a brief amount of time. So how do you calculate single day implied volatility? At least uh, this is something which is mathematical in nature, very logical in nature, and which is derived from uh, uh, the derivatives that are traded. So this is something very uh, important. You should be able to calculate. Now, uh, traders or experienced traders can do it uh, on hand, but uh, it, uh, you might want to learn this formula. How do you calculate? 
a single day volatility about the wix index why uh, right implications of a rising or falling wix it is clearly given there in the book how to calculate expected 30 day market movement so there is another formula which is given in the wix index uh, book and you might want to it's a simple calculation you look at the wix index you just open on the mobile you've got cboe wix which is now at elevated levels or india wix and uh, which is at around 21 or so you calculate it simple as that so once you do it by hand uh, uh, you will be able to remember so that there is no confusion between a single day and a 30 day uh, calculation coded in the sense uh, we were uh, uh, using or taking it into a practical aspect as simple as that so uh, you get the idea behind the indicator as well and then you get also get creative with it how far you can take so when you do that you are actually then uh, using the indicator not just in its default mode but then you also be creative with it and actually use it you might want to use it in any of your systems or while you're managing the option book or something like that what is emh you want to look at uh, the three forms there those are uh, easy to remember if you have read uh, the three forms of the emh key difference between them the information the key difference between them which is there which emh uses uh, technical technical plus fundamental or all other information and what is the idea behind emh what is uh, what does it say and then later on uh, you know uh, how uh, behavioral finance which is a fresh area of uh, you know uh, it, which is a very fresh uh, subject and how it is actually uh, you know challenging the emh itself the emh and the market models capm uh, valid criticism of capm models it's a very small chapter four runners to behavioral finance so behavioral finance how momentum strategies or mean reversion strategies are there you might want to look at the basic uh, idea behind those uh, uh, strategies concept of value investing value investing is similar to mean reversion approach uh, explain how value investing gram and dot conflicts with the image. So there are brief studies. Uh, so this is a bit chapter which is lengthy and uh, but uh, you should have read the book to actually understand uh, how uh, they uh, conflict uh, with the image. Noise traders and the law of one price. What is arbitrage? What is fungibility? Uh, noise versus information and what makes uh, a trader, a noise trader. Noise traders as uh, technical traders in the context of market valuation. So this is again theoretical chapter which uh, you might want to give it a read um, and why technical traders are considered a specific type of noise traders. And then there is a learning itself in this uh, chapter. Academic approaches to technical analysis, how technical analysis re remains relevant despite the EMH. So this is like now you are given uh, perspectives and whatever you have learned about uh, say EMH. So how TA is still relevant, how TA is relevant. And when you are practicing it, when you are actually um, doing uh, non-discretionary trading. So this is something which uh, the image uh, says and how TA is actually, uh, uh, there are few points which is given and how it is relevant. And uh, despite the EMH, how adaptive market hypothesis reconciles uh, the image and technical and behavioral factors. And then how there is one market uh, um, which is based on evolution uh, market sentiment and technical analysis define sentiment as it relates to financial market, importance of crowd, challenges of using sentiment indicators, sentiment measures from market data, VIX as a sentiment measure, use of options volume OI. So uh, the four conditions when OI is falling or OI is rising when price is supporting or not, uh, use of futures, open interest, engaging the sentiment. So you at least get the basic idea that whether the trend is positive, whether it is uh, uh, there is a long addition and the price is up. So there both are uh, 
in sync those kind of uh, things commitment of trader support short interest short interest is a very uh, um, good study you uh, anyone who is uh, uh, looking at uh, being contrary in trader so i believe when i did this and then later on there was this one stock which was yes bank and there was a huge fall it was around 28 level there everyone was um short in it and the next day the thing is it is opened up and rallied almost 25 30% so you might want to look at this so i looked at it in a way that i also inculcated it when i was doing in a discretionary way but then you might want to look at it and uh, see it uh, as a study sentiment measures from external data news advertisements uh, as sentiment measures how uh, there was this one uh, the economist pulled out the bull run 2.2 for it space and after that it space went down so that literally happened and i was studying these things and so this is also very important this is a a, a different section but then uh, it consists a lot of uh, theoretical aspects but then there are uh, studies which are shared which can be actually used statistics descriptive statistics what is mean median mode methods of calculating them so as i said uh, there is a, a very simple question which i do get that do you want to uh, should i uh, be able to learn the formula or should i not uh, there are so many indicators but uh, the idea is once you get the concept of the indicator uh, you should be able to understand the indicator itself so you might as a trader or you might as a candidate you might want to do it on excel but uh, then i as i suggested you take 10 15 data points try to calculate these indicators um, on uh, by hand and by uh, using calculator so makes you familiar two measures of uh, dispersion standard deviation and variance value of data uh, visualization as a component to descriptive statistics then there is an introduction to probability it's just a simple introduction what is uh, you know the phrase independent and identically distributed the impact of the law of large number this law of large number is something which is going to go with you go along till level 3 and you would understand how it is important uh, identify sq what is the difference what is sq what is kurtosis normal probability distribution the bell curve then the last one objective rules and their evaluation technical analysis what is rule uh, so this is something where you get a bit uh, you ask question to yourself what is a rule in a trading system uh, what is binary uh, something which is giving you yes or no and then uh, what can be multiple thresholds traditional rules and inverse rule importance of benchmarking and evaluating trading rules uh, uh, what are certain biases which might be there uh, which is there when you are comparing with the benchmark describe the value of using detrended prices we just uh, if you have learned there are two ways which is already described in the book uh which is uh, uh there how you can detrain the data how you can detrain the data uh, the value of using detrained prices and uh, describe the key components of trading costs then <clears throat> being right or making money uh four key characteristic given by uh, ned davis for successful investors having plans so it's if you have gone through ndr's reports if you have seen them they do also share some of their reports but these reports are very exhaustive there is no gray area there is everything is measured everything is weighted everything is given an output yes or no they are also given certain points you how you can create a universe of not just technical indicators but other uh, uh, you know indicators which might be the fed which might be the monetary and what not and all of them are given in a format chart everything is uh, objective in that 
you are given an output which clearly states that the market is bullish we are long that uh, might be a 10 percent more correction in nasdaq pull it into uh, if uh, say uh, treasury yield is going to go to say 2 percent you might see a 10 percent correction in nasdaq those kind of things how do you create such models how do you create even models if you're not just uh, uh, confined to technical analysis indicators but then what is the use or simplicity of say golden cross generally golden cross is something which is, uh, look on look down but what is the importance how you can use just 50 and 200 is moving average inculcate it or with all other indicators and give a output which clearly tells you that this is a bullish market this is a bearish market this is a sideways market we are at cash we are exposed to equity this much percent all these things you learn in this so you might want to at least learn what are the four characteristics what are those uh, nine rules uh, given so you can at least create them in your domestic market the model building process internal external indicators valuation indicators uh, discuss the use of uh, moving averages signals based on crossings and slopes so there is a brief difference which i said that uh, there is a change in the indicator itself uh, on rolling basis and uh, then there is a, a closing price above the uh, certain moving average or there is a cross of two moving averages so these are the various ways in which moving averages can be used and last relative strength as a criterion uh, for investment selection uh, several relative strength ratios limitations of rs in investment decisions all those things so these are the study method which you should have taken but now this is uh, way out of uh, topic that you should have uh, uh, had a linear study and not a topical study that's what i would suggest but then there are certain traps which i already shared so uh, let me see yes key points to discuss your focus at least you should be uh, looking at book once if you have not you are suggested that you go through at least learning objective statements those are given at uh, in every chapter uh, starting you should have at least gone through that if not you still have time i won't say there, there is a time limitation you should at least go through los read them out understand what is expected out of a chapter all right what you should know at least out of a chapter uh, what is expected out of candidates or learnings so i clearly said at least go through los if you if you have you should have gone through the book itself the number of questions 132 12 will be there and uh, those will be not uh, marked but then um, you should know the detail how much uh, time you have how much question uh, is then required how much minutes or a minute and few seconds for each question so do not pressure yourself in that term foundation but then at least you want to measure up uh, with time do we expect formulas yes you are expected to know the idea behind the formula if you have not it will take not more than 15 20 minutes to at least to say when i'm talking about just moving averages so calculating different uh, types of moving averages the body of knowledge as i said uh, this book is very exhaustive in itself the uh, the book is an exhaustive itself it gives you exposure to everything it gives you ta tools that are there all the basic knowledge about the tools which is uh, there then uh, you are given exposure to say ethics which is three percent then you are given an exposure to uh, measuring the market strength the volatility the options uh, the VIX, the iv and then uh, how david aronson make it more uh, logical when it is about uh, um ea what is how do you define rule how do you make it binary there are few outputs only one or yes or no or yes or no or say sideways so things like that and uh, that is what expected uh, that is what is expected out of any candidate and the ccc i mean uh, now if you have read the book that is well and good 
the with the time we have left you don't have to panic keep yourself calm cool and composed if you have read the book that is well and good if you haven't at least uh, gone through the book once i would suggest this is a mistake you should have done that but then the los the learning objective statements for any chapter is very very important it is very very important you should at, at least when you are reading a chapter focus that what was expected out of you to learn from the chapter and have you learned that have you gone through that particular area have you gone through that particular concept which is there given in the chapter and then uh, yes cool calm composed you are just few hours short of your exams which i believe is from third but uh, uh, this is for say next level as well making notes is good you then uh, put information in your mind in an organized way and not just uh, putting it like just in the bin right you are keeping information so keep yourself everything which you have read now it is there in the back of your mind so it is up to you how do you uh, take that information read the questions do not jump on to the uh, options given don't try to find a question through the solution okay read the question say once twice or maybe thrice then look at options available because when you're reading the question when you're reading it again and again you are actually making your mind process the thoughts and connect the dots which is asked in a question okay so a lot of confusion which is already uh, going to mount up because it's the exam time and you're in front of the screen a lot of confusion which is there in your mind will be reduced if you read the question say twice or thrice then look at the options make a logical decision but that is it uh, for l1 um, it's consisting of i believe 41 42 chapters which is uh, a very very uh, big concept uh, i mean a big uh, uh, you know but then uh, given the fact that uh, uh, this is something which is going to build your knowledge for say l2 and then you move to l3 so uh, the idea here is which i also shared that you might be practicing ta uh, for uh, a good amount of time you might be quantitative or say uh, non discretionary trader using systems you might be Uh, looking at certain rules say rsi above 70 a breakout or prices above going above upper star, moving or say bollinger band it's a buy or say you are a mini version trader you want to sell all those things keep them you know out of your mind when you're looking at uh, charts when you're facing questions this is something which is related to the basic terminologies oh i guess uh, no right so this is all about basic terminologies technical analysis tools your uh, learning about various markets which is there in the book and uh, do not try to put your experience of using those indicators into your answers Uh, it's a simple words given that rsi is overbought at 70 rsi is oversold at 30 so that is what you are needed to know about the indicator as i said if you are learning about the indicator there is a key difference say between uh, uh, as i said about say stochastic which calculates uh, uh, the range and when i'm talking about range it is looking at close to relative to lowest low while william sar is uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, close in relation to the highest high so this key difference 
right? But if you have gone through the book and understood this concept, that is well and good. But that is also what is expected out of you to learn uh, when I'm talking about indicators. I'll take a few questions, then we'll end this. We have already gone. Uh, if you have any question, you can put it. If you uh, have the 2020 curriculum, 2021 has few new chapters. I'm done with 2020 book. How do I approach the chapters which are not there? Well, you, this is something. The curriculum keeps changing and it is uh, for the good to be very honest because when i was back in 2018 i did there were some chapters which are now there uh, in l1 so uh, you might want to reach out to say your friends uh, and seek help but it is important there is uh, um, something about noiseless charts the time frames the data intervals as well which is good and which is included in level one then there is uh, there are chapters which are re related to say statistics description of statistics and uh, say i believe back testing and whatnot so um, these chapters are also very important so they are included in the curriculum with a point of view that you are given an exposure in level one itself to all these things which are going to be a major part of your learning in level two and level three. So reach out to someone who has a L1 book. Uh, I'm, I'm be, I think there are people who might be willing to you help for your, uh, to help you out. Passport is necessary in ProMetric Center. Uh, it is uh, needed. I believe there are no more questions. Uh, if I have completed the book, is it sufficient or I need to take the mock test as well? Well, this is good actually, Devesh, if you have completed the book. Usually I get a lot of students who just come for the mock test. You know, mock test, test bank is to give you an idea. Even the CMT Association in its, on its website clearly say that they do uh, give some sample questions. Uh, they do give some sample questions, but this is to give you an idea. So this that, that is good. Uh, I mean, if you have not, uh, so I believe you can go to the uh, association website itself. And uh, uh, I believe there are some certain sample questions given 12, 15 questions, which are given. So you get a fair amount of idea. If you have gone through the book, I think uh, that is uh, more than sufficient for you. But then if you don't have the test bank, uh, I'm not going to sell it to you, but then you try to create questions in your mind. So, for example, when I was leading, uh, I was confused, as I said, about this stochastic and Williams are. So I learned both the indicators. I understood what's the difference between them. Right. So there is a concept of divergence, which is given. So you might want to frame a question in your mind while you are reading something. So uh, if you don't have the test bank, then go through the LOS again. And learning objective statements are something which I said guiding light. So uh, read them, uh, spend some time reading the LOS itself. Uh, it is good you have covered the entire book. Okay, uh, I believe um, this is it. Uh, it's already 7.20. Just keep yourself cool, calm and composed. Uh, if you have read, uh, uh, Devesh, there was a uh, certain uh, see, uh, to be honest, uh, um, 2020 was a tough time. Okay, so you might be given uh, um, say feedback, or there is a feedback process which keeps on there, or there are groups, WhatsApp groups, and whatnot, and people do talk. But 2020 was a tough time, so even ProMetric and then remote proctoring was there. But I believe that was a one time event. So there were certain adjustments which were made on the pro metric uh, part, and then they rectified uh, back in 2020. But I believe most of the things are sorted out. And for me, uh, if you would ask me, I would say it is uh, better to go at a pro metric center uh, 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 to give the exam rather than taking it at home. That's my personal suggestion. Uh, just be there on time. If you are a given slot, uh, make sure you are there uh, half an hour or so 40, 45 minutes uh, uh, before that. So you uh, become comfortable uh, with the environment, comfortable knowing the directions of your test venue. Uh, 
सो आई यूज टू टेक द नियरेस्ट होटल और प्लेस फ्रॉम द टेस्ट सेंटर इफ यू आर फर्स्ट टाइम गिविंग इट ऑन अ प्रोमेट्रिक सेंटर मेक श्योर यू नो द मैप मेक श्योर यू नो द वे of reaching the destination and uh, be there at least 30 45 minutes uh, before the exam i'll share the recording i'll upload it and uh, i believe uh, uh, you'll get the uh, uh, recording in your emails when you have registered uh, uh, we might have got the email id so i'll do one thing uh, you'll get an email uh, within 2 hours चैप्टर्स is uh, not going to help you uh, you should have read the book at least once uh, los is something very important they serve as a guiding light for each chapter and what you are expected to learn what is the concept you are expected to learn but anyhow uh, be uh, cool calm and composed uh, and all the best so uh, just a minute here all the best guys i have put across our number in the chat box in case of any further doubts before exam in case you panic anything just feel free to get in uh, touch with uh, us not a problem at all my name is lovely sharma you can reach out on linkedin as well i'll be happy to help i've had a few conversation few 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 students and uh, i can spare 15 20 minutes for there is no issue with that a motto is to clear the exam thank you I'll be ending this. You'll get the recording in your email.